So Haram, QuickBit recently came out of stealth mode. You all made a, quite a splash at CES. Now we're here in Barcelona for Mobile World Congress and I was hoping to learn from you, what is the problem that you saw in the market and how are you addressing it? Great, thanks uh, for hosting us here. It's been a whirlwind last month for us after CES and we've actually been busy doing our first proof of concept deployment and it's with a large system integrator that had the problem of wiring up a warehouse for some Internet of Things platform. And the challenge they had was wiring that up for that application would have taken them months to do because of the cabling and wiring and setting it up. With our solution, within a couple of hours, they were able to get the network running. And knock on wood, for the last uh, six weeks, it's been running with 99.9999 reliability. Highly reliable, highly available, and then also, uh, you know, it's performing at the best, you know, gigabit speed. So, very happy with that. The customers very happy. And actually, they're doing the follow-up now to do the second and third deployments. Uh, so that's one vertical. And at the same time, we're getting other uh, vertical markets, be it agri-tech, be it uh, warehousing, be it shipping, navigation. Those kind of markets are really, really interested about using our technology to solve their problems. Okay, so you're using the unlicensed 60 gigahertz band, and you mentioned some of the indoor applications, but yes. you're also taking the technology for outdoors, correct? Yeah, that's what we're, um, we're launching now with the outdoor product to the show. And what's happened is we've talked to those indoor customers. They've said, hey, you wired up my building. Why don't you just wire up the parking lot? Why don't you wire up the light poles around us? So as we look at those opportunities, it's really an inside-out strategy in terms of taking that network capability and providing it outdoors. But also there's uh, larger applications like smart cities, smart infrastructure, small cell backhaul as dense 5G networks start being realized. Lots of new opportunities, integrating in light poles, integrating on the side of buildings, or also creating what we call private networks. You know, networks on demand that can be built up in a very fast and efficient manner and that can be remotely managed and controlled. So I want to circle back to it. You mentioned the time to deployment. You know, this is really key if you yeah. can get these networks turned up quickly. So what is the, the time that it takes to get these installed and running? Uh, these units can be installed in uh, literally 10 to 15 minutes. I mean, these are very light. You, you can look at this in the palm of my hand. We've designed it to be aesthetically very easy to install and deploy in terms of the mounts, in terms of the screws, in terms of just the way it's set up. And then with the, with the, our edge controller and cloud management solution, it's just a very simple zero touch provision system as well as authentication security. All of it done, is done, the guts of all is in that edge controller in our cloud service. And that enables the solution to be very fast. For, from an installation perspective, it really requires a high school student and an electrician to really set it up. And when we did this solution in, in Chicago, it actually was literally, you know, minutes to do this setup. Actually, it took us longer to do the power and some of the other things, but the communication system was literally minutes. So a lot of the conversation around private networks is focused on license band and in the U.S. Uh, shared access to 3.5, yeah. but you really can deliver a better experience using 60 gigahertz without going through all the machinations of accessing licensed or lightly licensed spectrum, right? Well, I think it's complementary. I think there's uh, use cases where, you know, CBRS, as you mentioned, the light license spectrum or 5G, it can be the last lag, the final access, and then we provide that backhaul infrastructure to enable them to be deployed fast and cheap, so it also helps them. Um, also, alternatively, there are use cases where you just need a, a pipe, a gigabit pipe, and we can provide that pipe if it's a video surveillance camera, if it's a Wi-Fi access point. You don't need that sophistication of you know, an LT-based network or something that has more integrated with the core, just an IP pipe. I think from that perspective, we're, we're really the simplest, easiest way to do it. And then from a cost perspective, I think this is disruptively lower cost than any of those solutions, not only from the spectrum side, but also from the technology side. What's in this is the 60 gigahertz chipset, and the technology has gone through the sixth generation from the chipset side. So it's really at a really good performance level, but also at a really great cost level. So I think uh, from that perspective, it makes a lot of sense. We see it as more complementary, but there are also use cases where I think this would be the easier, faster way to do it. We just had a couple of customers here who come in and said they want to wire up a, a large palace or a large location where you've got video and surveillance. And in order to put that network, they just need simple connectivity, but really high speed, low latency, so you need that. But you don't need to have the core networking or other features that come with, uh, with those kind of private networks, right? This is just a surveillance video network that needs to take the data to the cloud fast and do analytics. 
So I think from that perspective, we provide a very simple, easy solution. So as you continue to engage with customers, uh, what's next? Well, I think we are working on different verticals, as I said. There's some very, very interesting opportunities. Uh, we're going to be a little selective in deciding the markets where we think we can provide the highest value to the end customer and where we can make a big impact. And so our goal for this year is to scale up uh, the business with, uh, you know, get the revenue going as well as get the customer uh, adoption happening and then be ready to scale this company up to the next level. I think we're very excited. The opportunities are large. Uh, we're a small team, so we're going to grow the team. We're going to start investing in uh, a lot more of the go-to-market relationships and partnerships. We have excellent meetings here. We've got a lot of partners already lined up. And so I think it's a combination of execution, but also uh, figuring out how we can add more value to the end customer. So. so Haram, this sounds like really an ideal solution for connecting the industrial IoT. Can you tell me a little bit about your perspective on that? Yeah, that's great. I mean, um, I've been attending a lot of events here on uh, Industry 4.0 initiatives, where the idea is to digitize the factory, digitize the supply chain, logistics, a lot of those things. And I think it's interesting to see that as more and more devices get connected in the, in the factory, be it through drones, be it through movable assets in the factory. There's a real need to provide high-speed connectivity. I think there's talk about local 5G or you know, inside 5G to do some of those things, which makes a lot of sense for some of those robotics applications and, and the last you know, 50 to 100 feet. But all of those need to be connected to an IP network, need to be connected to the cloud to be managed. I think we provide that backbone infrastructure allows for that. Uh, so we see a lot of interest in that stuff. And we see a lot of partners, uh, both on the Wi-Fi side, as well as the LTE and 5G side, who are looking for that backbone technology that will help them scale up faster. Um, I think the other thing I'm seeing a lot is with Wi-Fi 6, a lot of initiatives on that as well to get very high capacity, um, small cell coverage within location. So combination of both you know, compute applications, um, control logic applications, and then high, de high data offload applications are very interesting. Um, the other thing we see is data offload, you know, be it uh, from an en in a large enterprise for transportation systems. Think about ships, think about trains, think about large vehicles where you're dumping a bunch of data. And I think 60 gig is probably a really great opportunity for that. And our solution is is really good for that. So we're we're looking at that market as well, which is kind of tangential to, um, but it is still IoT in, in terms of the application. So I think those are exciting new use cases that are really being validated with the customer engagements that we're doing. Well, I look forward to seeing some of your proofs of concept as you continue to go to market. So thank you for the update. Sounds Aram. good. Thank you, John.